Hi, Cancer Seeker. How are you? Very, very, very happy to have you back. Or a new, if you're a newcomer, welcome to the Existential Shift. My name is Morgane. And I will be giving you your monthly telescope for November. Are we ready? My rising is in Cancer. You guys are great advocates for me and for the existential shift, so thank you. I value you. Cancer energy. Messages for the collective of the Cancer Zodiac for the month of November. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. You can watch your other placements because these are general readings, so in case you want a broader picture, watch your other placements. Um, and I also recommend to go back to your October reads, your current reads, because now you're in the midst of it. And you can learn from it. All right. Cancer for November, please. Benevolent, clear, accurate guidance for my amazing Cancerians, my warriors, sensitives, an empath samurai. <laughs> That's what you are. I'm going to fight you to the death, but you know, I care about you. <laughs> I feel your pain, but you know, you still did this and that, so we need to be in it. Okay. I, I'm in the same boat, rising. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm speaking to myself. All right. I feel your pain, but your pain is irrelevant because you're also a piece of shit. So, wow, cancer. Okay. Good one. I don't know if to be terrified or to, if to be terrified of you or to admire you. What am I supposed to do with that? Mm. That's kind of cool, but it's also kind of scary. Mm. Can I just be your friend? Yeah. You know, people think Scorpios have a sting. Well, they do. But when a cancer gets hurt, you're not messing with cancer's sting. You're messing with the sting of karma. Okay? Cancer has such a cure, um, a cure, a pure cure, curing ocean like you know earth loves the ocean okay earth loves the ocean earth needs the ocean when the ocean gets hurt earth and creation and existence gets hurt and karma wakes up cancers are known for it because the heart you know that echoes the strongest okay so if someone echoes a strong sense of pain that is so pure and real and has so such strong waves like the ocean it is felt on every level of this existence so it, it just flashes back at whoever did that it's like a tsunami it's like you throw a rock I had Taurus two months ago with someone throwing rocks at them Anyway, so someone throws a rock at the ocean, right? Causes a little bit of waves. But then it seems like it's calmed, it calmed down. But hey, butterfly effect, okay? And if you know a little bit about tsunamis, you know that something little can happen in the ocean, in the bottom of the ocean, like a little bit of a break at the bottom of the ocean, even, even something smaller that makes a wave and a wave and a wave. And then before you know it, the other side of Earth tsunami so you think you're hurting a cancerian and it's okay they are they're okay with it they're they they'll get over it whatnot because they have their tough shell of a warrior and sometimes they'll fight you back sometimes they'll defend my, themselves sometimes sometimes they'll just crawl into their shell and just kind of shut down but the pain that has happened causes wave it's not even the it's not you know scorpio creates its own um retaliation cancer they just need to feel the pain and something else starts retaliating for them and they're 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 not even aware mm, yeah 
true words. Okay. The Hierophant, the Three of Wands, the Ten of Wands, and the Five of Cups. Hmm. Okay. A certain pathway or way of living that you know you just have to go about something that, okay, this is the right thing to do. This is the essential thing to do. Um, but it brings with a heavy burden, um, an emotional heavy burden. Um, something that just doesn't give you happiness or satisfaction you just for some reason you think is the right thing to do or you should do it um, like I, I sense like this moral obligation for some of you maybe for a promise or for uh, a contract or for commitment it brings with just heaviness and burden and six of cups right after the five of cups hmm. so I feel like this what I just described could either really happen be happening right now or have recently happened but now like there's a sense of renewal coming into the picture where things feel a little bit more flowing and slightly easier, that you feel like there's a better direction. Imagine um, a big house that is empty of guests or family members, like for example, someone living in a really big house and they're kind of, okay, they have everything, but they're also pretty lonely because the bigger the space, the smaller they are, the more they feel the void. So it's like, it's great, okay? Achievement, something. This could be, I don't know, like someone just went through a divorce and the family left and now they're left in this big home. Or someone that is single and they're very successful and they have a lot of money or like a big home, but they're, but they're alone. So they feel the void. Um, this could be anything along those lines. And suddenly, the Six of Cups, there's an opportunity to fill that space with laughter, with presence, with um, emotion. Like, you've constructed the walls or the foundations, but now it needs to be filled up. You know, it's 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 bare. Okay, now we need to add the the interior design, the furniture, the the color. Um, so take it to the emotional realm. Okay, now there's something in our life that is really good, but we're feeling almost a little bit lost in it because you know it's like when you it's it's lonely at the top, right? When you're succeeding in something, but you don't have anyone to share it with. If a tree falls down in the forest, but no one's there to listen, does it make a sound? You know all that. Um, so now someone is there to hear the sound, to share the joy, to share the success, to enjoy the fruits of the labor, There's some, some, someone to share it with. Okay. It feels like it goes more towards that direction. I'm sorry. It's really hot in here. I want to open a window. Excuse me. need a crack to let the breeze come in, which is kind of symbolic. Right. Kind of reminds me of, um, you know, you, you imagine having a beautiful bike, right? Beautiful professional bike, but no one's there to ride them, or you're so crazed about them remaining intact and safe and nothing happening to them, so you're closing them in the garage or something and don't let anybody ride them and it's like that's kind of miss missing the point there if you have like a kitchen and a big dining table you know you want to have guests 
right, a huge bed, you want to have someone to share it with. So that kind of is the vibe that I'm getting here. Someone realizing maybe that they can't do it all on their own. And even if they can't, it's not mu as much fun as they thought it would be. Um, someone wants to open up their heart to let someone in and share all that goodies with. That's great, actually. Okay, let's see further for Cancer for November. This could be you. This could be someone in your life, Cancer. The High Priestess. I have the Hierophant on one side, the first one of the table, the High Priestess on the other side of the table, and in between all that. Okay, some of you, this is one line of narrative that keeps on that example, say you are a married couple and your children left the house. And now you're left to be alone with all that space and time and you're like, okay, what do we do with it? Or you're a couple that has a lot, but maybe you're just newlyweds or you, you've decided to not have kids for a really long time because you wanted to just enjoy um, marriage or independence, but then now it starts to feel a little bit empty and so you're starting to think of expansion, right? Again, not all of you, this could be symbolic. Um, but the Hierophant and the High Priestess are natural um, Queen of Wands. Mm, fire energy could be Leo, Sag, Aries. There is a lot of fire on the table, but there's also a lot of water. Like one side I have the Hierophant could, isn't necessarily fire, it's more like on the Taurus end of the Zodiac, but um, which is earthly. I feel like, okay, I want you to see this. Maybe I'll bring the camera back up just, just so I'll show you. The, it's interesting because um, Aries had the same type of uh, ambivalence or duality, I'm sorry. So here we have like a lot of reds. This is earthly and fire, right? And here we have a lot of blues. This is water and... It's mostly water energy here, but I'm getting also the air element. So it's like half of the elements are here, half of the elements are here, which seemingly is supposed to be great and compatible, but there's something in between that won't let it merge. Like if, if it was, say, like this, right? And then this, it would be more like, you know, synced together, but it's almost like it just keep having the the metaphor the vision of two individuals that are together but are apart together but apart so it's either a couple that grew distant from each other or and then like physically they're in the same space but there is an emotional distance or the opposite a couple that is physically at distance but there is the spiritual strong connection now, who's this? The Queen of Wands. Is it a daughter? Is it another person? Is it a student? Who is this Queen of Wands for the Hierophant and the High Priestess? A combination of the High Priestess and the Queen of Wands and the Hierophant. Most readers will go to third party. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Sorry, but the, the theme here is actually um, energy work, strong spirituality that leads to mysticism, to energy work. So this is the structured spirituality, a.k.a. religion. This is the great mother, the, the, um, the, the Celtic worker, the, um, the shaman, the, the pagan it's two ends of the same. It's just two different expressions to express faith um, and energy work. And the Queen of Wands could be a very healthy combination of these things. She expresses, her, this character expresses their faith in a mundane earthly matter, meaning daily, 
working with the hands. It could be witchcraft. I don't. I know there's God. Why is there such a negative? Uh, let talk. Talk time, Cancer. The word witch derives from the ancient word witcha, which means wisdom, the wise. The reason witches have a bad reputation is because powerful women had a bad reputation given to them by the priesthood, by religion. Hmm? This is like the times of, you know, when, when, when Christianity started going into uh, spreading over Europe and paganism was um, persecuted and diminished and exiled and slaughtered um, and forced to take Christianity and... Um, deny their gods of nature it's like that silver lining in between of the time where things are still existing simultaneously and the scales are changing and there's a little bit of this and a little bit of that and back then it didn't work with harmony there was an attempt of christianity to take the pagans pagan pagan actually means the literal meaning of it is a countryman or a countrywoman someone that works the earth a peasant okay working the earth working the gods of the earth working the elements the great mother fire earth wind um, water and there was this attempt to draw them in by using their symbols for example the cross is actually originated from the Celt so this is the regular cross as we know it right this part is long this part is short the original Celtic cross is like this an equal um, plus sign that symbolizes balance between the elements, the four elements, um, air, earth, fire, water, north, south, east, west, the physical, the emotional, the cognitive, and the spiritual, and so on. And for some reason, I feel all of that, we're far away from being in these times, but we're actually not because Okay, bear with me. I'll, 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 I'll find the connection to this reading and how it speaks to you guys. Because it, it's just here, so I need to talk about it. Um, these days are very similar to those days that I just described. The end of paganism, the beginning of Christianity and religion. The end of um, matriarchy and the, and the beginning of patriarchy. Before patriarchy, this for those of you who think that historically patri... Um, Patriarchy was the ruler. No, before patriarchy, there was matriarchy, working the land, working the great mother. Women were, in most tribes, women were the uh, leading force. Things have shifted about 2,500 years ago. Between 2003 and 4,000 years ago, the shift has started. But this hasn't been the same as today back then. Now, that shift is a similar shift we're going through today, except the opposite. Now we're going from uh, patriarchy back to matriarchy. Now it's not really, it's back and forward, okay? We're thinking like, oh, women's right, we're progressing finally, but we're actually going back to how it originally was. Originally the woman was highly regarded and highly respected. Um, and the Viking culture, the most badass culture that I can think of anyway, Vikings were ferocious warriors. Um, women were on the same level as men when it comes to warfare, fighting, uh, strategizing, being in the battlefield, bleeding, dying, killing, all that jazz. I'm sorry for going grotesque. It's just to express how I'm not a feminist. I'm a goddess. Not to deny feminism. I'm just saying why stop there you're a freaking goddess lady divine feminine and dear man don't get me wrong you're a badass lover i love you you are worthy you are you are important but this is what happens when we go from one extreme and we seek balance we first have to go to the other extreme 
okay? So if we were in the extreme of matriarchy thousands of years ago, now we've been in the extreme of patriarchy thousands of years. Now we're little by little beginning to shift back on the scale and finding the balance between the matriarch and the patriarch and their bo and both of their wisdom and how they complete each other and how they emerge. So right now they are on the two far ends of the table. How do we do this? And I feel like the Queen of Wands in the story have an important role. Could be someone entering your life to kind of remind you of your powers, of what you can do, of what you should do. Connection to the animal kingdom, to connection to the elements, connection to cooking. Cooking is not the art fo form of the uh, submissive woman. Cooking is the art form, form of a witch. It is perfect, delicate balance between matters. It's alchemy. Everyone can take materials, but not everyone can make magic out of it, can make a perfect stew or, or a dish that is just delicious. It requires inner balance to know how to balance the temper, like the temperance card, all the materials. It requires a combination of the recipe, knowing, having like cognitive knowledge of what works with what, but also intuition. Just intuitively knowing how much to put and when it, and at what point and what what kind of heat it needs to be on medium heat high heat low heat all that how much water how much emotion to put how much fire how much passion to put how much should it wait and sit and cook how much earth to put how much time does it need to chill and cool down how much air to put Okay, Cancer, so this this is, this became a very spiritual, energetic reading. I, I, I enjoy this immensely. I Don't get me wrong. I love to talk about love and mundane things. It's important. Money, sex, yay. Fun, 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 fun. But this stuff is what gets me really um, excited. But let's see how this leads to... I don't know. Let's just see. I'm going to let the cards keep talking um okay let's keep going with this queen of wands spirit i like this reading let's keep going for cancer sun moon rising venus oh four of swords and ten of swords okay so let's go back to the disconnect element of between these two individuals that are for, far from each other there, there is the element, and I have two tens right underneath each other. I have the ten of wands in the first row and the ten of swords underneath it in the second row. It's also the air that feeds the fire. This will go to, into in the extended where I take the elements and the neurological aspect and make the connection. I'll talk about it more over there. Um, four of swords and ten of swords. The element of, okay, someone is possibly ill. This is not a premonition. This is something you're supposed to already know. So if this is not your case, don't be like, oh no! <laughs> You'll know if it's yours. Um, someone's possibly ill and recovering from this. Could be, it may have started in the month of August or late August, uh, and then potentially August, September, October, November, potentially continue until around November, December. But not necessarily. This could be beginning now. This doesn't have to show four months. But there is the element of needing to recover. It doesn't have to be physical. It can also be um, emotional or spiritual. Explain this further, please. Because time stands still. With Four of Swords and Ten of Swords, time stands still. And I want to understand this. Because this was supposed to explain the Queen of Wands. Show me more, please. Show me further. For Cancer, for the month of November. Ace of Swords, lovely. So I feel like 
Ten of Swords symbolizes the month of October, 10, which is the end of a certain recovery or um, ailment or break or distance. And in November, something is cutting through all that. And there is a sharp solution or realization that allows something to be resolved. There is a strong ending of a cycle and then a strong beginning of a cycle. Now, whenever I have the High Priestess and the Ace of Swords in a reading, I have to take it back to more, you know, to the to the paganism. Um, Mor Morgane Le Fay, hi, or Morgana Le Fay. Um, she was King Arthur's half sister, the, the High Priestess of Avalon, the Island of Apples, and a, mo a lot of people don't know it. I don't know if you know this, but High Priestesses in those times were also the forgers of swords. They would forge swords. She's also the one who forged King Arthur's sword with Merlin. Okay, so there's a strong connection to that mythology um, of the Excalibur. Watch Aries. I spoke about that also in Aries, so this connects in a way to their reading. Um, I just posted Aries yesterday and it was also kind of mind-blowing and pr pretty awesome reading. Um, it's almost like I'm feeling someone kind of went into their shell, which is a very Cancerian thing to do. But over there, um, they found their powers and really really uh, made connections in their head and in their energy about certain things in their life um, and in their future and how they want to go about things um, and there's like a plan being formed and now it's time for execution in november Let's see what this says, Cancer. What precedes the Excalibur in this case, the Ace of Swords? Strong inner knowing, strong truth, accuracy. This is also fulfillment of destiny. Of Okay, I know now my direction. I know who I am. I know what I want to do. I know what I can do. Let's go. It's time to manifest your plan. Whatever this is that you've been sitting with, healing with, uh, contemplating over. Like if you were in the high priestess mode that, that is very inner and receptive, now you're tapping into the queen of wands mode of um, inner exterior. You're exerting now energy. Expressing. Receptive, expressive, expressive energy of that fire, of that knowledge. And did I not say that the air element will come? But you know what? The air element entered the row, the side of the table that I thought was earth and water. So now we're seeing how the elements combine, how that couple uh, uh, close, closes in on each other, um, putting their chairs closer to each other, or... Um, closing the gap of the distance between them to become one. Hierophant and the High Priestess. Both are highly skilled teachers, guru kind of um, leaders that, can, that really guide people and show people certain truths. And both of these individuals, um, the Hierophant and the High Priestess here, are now very much aligned with themselves. They're like, they don't need to go through a further journey to find themselves. They have found themselves and now they just need to go with their path. And in the Twin Flame journey, by the way, that's usually when there's union, when two people, it's not two halves, but two wholes. You, you know the narrative. Okay. Um, but, I, okay, let's keep going. I don't I don't like to give definitions like that twin flame soulmate it's like we 
think we know shit, we don't know shit, and then we try to give it taglines because it makes us feel safer. Just love. Or just don't love. Okay? Love thyself. Love, love thy other. Simple. They don't want to be with you? Okay, go away. They want to be with you and you want to be with them? Okay, be together. Oh, you need to go through a journey? Go through the journey. Oh, now you can be there? I don't know. Be together. Oh. This whole drama thing. <laughs> Sorry. A little bit of a rant. All right, let's keep going. Halloween is coming. I'm going to dress up either as Persephone or Morgane Le Fay. Maybe I'll do both because those are my um, uh, spirit animals. My car's name is Persephone. <laughs> my apartment will be named Avalon. <laughs> it's like, it's two different characters from different myths, but it's exactly the same characters. All myths are just different by names and associations, but it's always that magical divine feminine power that speaks out from whichever witch we're talking about. Whichever witch. I, I have no idea how I will call this video, but I really love this reading. If you're watching and you're like, just shut up and keep on with it and tell me if the person that I like is going to call me next week, this, this, this um, channel is not for you. Maybe it's not for you now and you can make it for you by growing the fuck up and keep listening to me and learning. Excuse my arrogance, I kind of love it about myself. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Okay, Ace of Swords, next, next for Cancer. You are my magical creatures. I need to give you magic when I do a reading. What, you just want me to do a mundane reading? Is that good enough for you, Cancer? It's not good enough for me. I like that as well, but sometimes we need an extra oomph. Yeah. Yeah. Cancer, be a magician. Stop asking if he loves you. Who gives a fuck? If he doesn't love you, he's a fucking idiot. Do you know how powerful you are? Do you know how beautiful you are? You must know. You must know. And if not, listen, listen to me more so you'll know more. You're fucking drop dead gorgeous. And so smart and so unique and so wise and so, so, so everything. Let him find you. Let her find you. All good. Do your magic, boo. Do your magic. Let's do magic here, okay? I'm going to start making more videos about magic. I'm going to, I think my 13th element for next month will be either about divine timing. Um, what does it mean even? What does it even mean? We'll see. Okay, I want, I want to clear all that uh, rant. I'm going to go back to the reading with the Ace of Swords. I think the Ace of Swords was just calling me to say all these things. It's a very Ace of Swords moment, what I just had. Sharp truth. Yep. Okay, let's keep going. Cancer. November. Yay. Woohoo! Queen of Cups, another queen. I love it. All these queens on the table, these are not your competition. And these are not your potential lovers. I don't know if you're a woman or a man. These are the forces in you that are looking to express themselves. And yes, it can come about in, in the form of people around you. But this could be a community. This could be people you learn from and grow from. This doesn't have to be people you're contemplating, who should I fuck, who should I marry? Not everything is about that. I mean, it could be. Queen of Cups is a water energy. It could be very much of a Scorpio. It could represent Scorpio season. We also have the crab. We also have you here. Hi. Hi, baby cancer. I love you. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> what can I do? I'm a fan. Um, some of you ladies out there, and this is for the women, are really owning up your sexuality and femininity and... A connection to your intuition 
no longer apologizing for wanting to be both beautiful and powerful, both sensitive and sharp. Why do you need to be either or? You're not, you know, there's that um, psychological thing, very ancient. Uh, you're either the mistress or the wife. You're either the virgin or the whore. You're all of them, honey. You're all of them. You're just wearing different costumes in different situations. All good. And dear man, if you're watching this, this woman that you're contemplating over, that maybe you have dilemmas over, I don't know. What is she? I'm not, I'm not really understanding. Is she this? Is she that? She's all of the above and it's okay. Don't feed into that ancient, um, ignorant narrative of a woman needs to be either that or that. You're not supposed to understand everything about us. Just like we're not supposed to understand everything about you guys. We're supposed to love each other and be empowered by each other and be inspired by each other. And the complexity and, and, um, and the uniqueness is mind-blowing and interesting and beautiful, not scary and weird. Allow her to be gorgeous and vast. Allow yourself to be gorgeous and vast. Stop apologizing. Stop judging. Enough. Why am I so angry? I'm sorry. Five of Swords, King of Cups. I'm sorry, King of Pentacles. Interesting, I said King of Cups. Five of Swords, King of Pentacles. Okay, here we start a real dilemma. Now it's getting real. Okay, maybe two different partners, options. If there's duality outside of you, there's duality inside of you. Once you'll know exactly who you are, there will only be one option that is very clear. There will be other options on the surface, but you won't have the dilemma. It will, the answer will be clear. There is a narrative of a man contemplating between two women here. Uh, why? I, I didn't do that about the reading that morning. I was just thinking I wanted to, I, I wanted coffee. Like, wow, I don't have coffee. <laughs> it's late afternoon now that I'm recording this. I'm not supposed to have another cup of coffee. I won't sleep. It's the Taurus mo full moon that won't let me sleep. I can already read. There There has to be always this one person who comments, you talk so much. Well, yeah, it's my channel. Where else will I talk? I talk about things that matter. Tell me about this king of pentacles and his five of swords. It's that BS dilemma. Someone standing on the fence, um, safe ground, sometimes checking in on that, sometimes checking in on that, but won't completely commit to one option or one person, um, either because they le like to leave their um, options, you know, um, open, or they're just too scared of themselves and of what they will get to know once they'll choose one specific individual, I don't know. Um, but Five of Swords is also a kind of lousy dilemma of like, you know what, just, just make it, just do something. You know, um, then you'll know. You'll either stay there if you like it or you will leave if you don't like it. Like, nothing is set in stone. Even the Excalibur. If the Excalibur got out of the stone, so if you'll make a, a seemingly a wrong, a wrong choice, then you could go back or change your mind. But how will you know if you won't try? Show me further for this King of Pentacles, please. That is, can also be a Capricorn energy, um, another Earth energy. We have the Hierophant here, now King of Pentacles. can also symbolize January, end of December, slash January. The Empress! The Empress is Demeter. She's the mother, mother of the High Priestess of Persephone in the Greek mythology. Demeter is the goddess of life and creation and nature and birth. 
um, and of spring and of summer. And see, this is what drives me crazy. When, when a king is looking at a goddess and thinks he can contemplate or think about it or take his time. I mean, really? Okay, you're a king, but only in comparison to humanity. This is a goddess of everything. I mean, honey, if he doesn't wake up, F that. And you, if you're watching and you're contemplating about a woman that embodies this and embodies that, all I can tell you is you're a fucking ass. Go get her before you lose her. Like, it's just simple. It is so mind-blowingly simple. I, I, I don't even know how to, like, talk to you. I'm sorry, bottom of the deck, I was about to mix, but then I changed my mind. Um, Merlin. <laughs> the hermit is also in, in Celtic myth, could be the um, expression of Merlin, who was the teacher of um, Morgan, Morgane Le Fay, taught her how to be a magician, high priestess, all that jazz. Ah, and he also, they both read runes, which, by the way, at the end of the extended, I also give messages from the runes. Now, normally, if you follow my channel, you know I give messages from these runes. But today, I suddenly had the urge to work with my first set of runes that I carved, that I made. Um, they're made of wood. They even still smell like wood, even though it's been like maybe 12, 13 years. So, great. Okay, a lot of myths here, a lot of gods and goddesses here, a lot of energy um, aspect of things. What am I trying to say to, to Cancer? What is Merlin and the Empress are here to tell Cancer? Ooh, um, the element of time, the importance of patience and time and seasons. You know, the Empress is very much about nature and harvest and seasons and birth. And you don't give birth after before nine months. It's not complete, right? Hermit is nine. So something is being born just at the right time. And during that time, don't force anyone else. Only force yourself for growth. If there's anyone else involved in the situation, whatever it is that you're contemplating about, they have their own journey that they need to go through. Do not put pressure over them. If you know the other side is ready and you're the one that hasn't been that has been hesitating, then take whatever time you need to fucking figure the shit out and then go to them, okay? Because they're not supposed to go to you. And if they are evolved as the Cancerians that are supposed to resonate with us, then they will let you be until you are ready, you understand? That was the message. Potentially, okay, there are a few waves here. Someone will be ready, be ready in November. Someone will be ready in January. That's what I needed to say. All right, that's what I needed to say. I'm going to give you in a second uh, messages from the Akashic Tarot, from the Akashic Records. Um, they're just so amazing. And but first, I want to show you your extended. But let me see. I think I want to make sure I'm not missing. Is there anything else I'm supposed to tell Cancer to somehow conclude all of this? Some of you are reuniting from pagan times. You were together in pagan times. King of Cups, hi. For the Queen of Cups, hey. In Aries, we had Queen of Wands and King of Wands. Here for Cancer, this is you, by the way. We have King of Cups, Queen of Cups. This doesn't have to necessarily be the specific zodiacs that are expressed here. This means from seven, there will be three, there will be one, okay? Union. Union, 
2018 is the year of the 11, it's the year of the union. There are different waves. Not everybody is happening at the same time, which is why I feel like someone is ready in November, someone is ready in January. Let them go through the process. Let them become the empress. Let them become the hierophant. Let them become the high priestess. Let them become the hermit by going through being the queen of cups, the queen of wands, the king of cups, the king of pentacles. Okay. Um... Work your magic from nature. Allow nature to run its course and work with it, not against it. Okay. That was what I was supposed to say. Now let's look at your extended and then I'll give you messages from the Akashic Terra. Um, two tens, of course. Yeah, babies. Major Arcanas. I go chronologically. Two, three, five, nine. Mm. Two fives. One of each of those. Um, I'm not going to take the um, court cards because we already got the picture. And Ace of Swords, I also chose to... I'm choosing to leave it here. Watch your watch Aries reading because they also had the same freaking thing. They had the Ace of Swords come up, and I chose to leave it even though there's not another Ace on the table. I have two ten, so it's one one, so one one one. Um, so we can address it as that, and it's just the Ace of Swords. I just can't ignore it with this. Can't. Um. Also, there's also the myth of Guinevere and Morgane Le Fay. Um, Guinevere was Arthur's wife. Morgane Le Fay was Arthur's half-sister. Um, there are just two sides of the same coin, coin of type of femininity. A complex story, but whatever. Anyway, Guinevere was blonde, Persephone was brunette, in case it matters to anybody. Oh, I'm sorry, Morgan Le Fay was brilliant. Yeah, but Persephone was also, I'm pretty sure, brilliant. Who cares? Why am I rambling? Okay, this is the first part of your... Um, if you're new to this channel, I vary. I change my energy depending on your energy and what I tap into. So before you judge me, watch other readings. <laughs> um, sorry for being so in your face like that. Um, but then if I won't do it, then who will, right? So this is the first part of your extended. I addressed the numerology and the element aspect. Something else come out of it. And then I clear the table and I do a, Kel a new shuffle and I do a Celtic cross. Which is 10 cards, speaking of Celtics, which is 10 cards on the table. It brings a specific narrative. Um, and then a message from the rooms. All right, guys, thank you. Oh, this reading has been long. So thank you for bearing with me. And now let's go to the Akashic Tarot. They're just so goddamn pretty. Look. So dear spirit, dear cards, dear Akashic records, please give me guidance, specific message, um, accurate, benevolent message for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of November. Um, as I'm putting the, I put the intention in, now I'm just going to wait for the card to fall. In the meantime, I can tell you that you are more than welcome to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for being here. And if you want the link to the extended, it's below in the information box. Over there, you can also find the link to Tarot Masterclass if you want to learn tarot from me. And my email is there if you want private reading. Okay, I give private readings. It's global, so we can talk wherever you are. Archangel Michael. Wow. Archangel Michael, and it's also number nine. Let's read. Let's read. Mm. There we go. The Archangel Michael is a channel of divine power. He is seen here sharing his energy with two small children, bringing them great strength and support. He is about to pick up the boy and he can help you lift your energy too. 
When you receive this card, know that your energy reflects Michael's amazing strength. This can be a cycle of increasing power for you. Uh, one where you feel your courage growing and you know what action to take next. Trust your convictions, your power, and your resourcefulness. Michael Upright heralds a time of greater courage, force, initiative, and action. So do not delay. He is right there with you. So tap into the dynamo within you and take the action that, com that compels you. With Michael and your own power, you can move mountains and lift yourself to new heights. Perfection. Perfection. Okay, see you in a second, the extended. I love you. Happy Halloween. And I will also see you in December, my loves. Bye.